It's Ketchup Packets. Hey everybody, I'm Sean. I'm Nate. And this is Ketchup Packets. Today we're starting a new series. Well, it's new for us. It's not new no, for the world. It's been because, out for a while. Yeah. You've seen the thumbnail of this video and you've read the title of the video, so you know what we're watching already. It's Band of Brothers. Oh boy. Uh, HBO miniseries about World War II. This is episode one, Kurahi, which is not a word I recognize. Nope. What about I don't know you? what that means. Nope, no idea. I expected some location yeah. in their war operation, mm -hmm. if I had to Makes guess. Makes sense. Some place that they are or some battle that they do. Um, what this, do you know about this show? Um, I know that it's well-renowned, people really like it, mm -hmm. and that it's um, very intense, which scares me. Though this war, the, the sort of realistic war stuff, scare, scares me. The World yeah. War II stuff is, is very um, intense. And, it definitely is. Yeah. Are, are you aware that, like, Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg and much of the creative force behind Saving Private Ryan went on to do this show after they finished that movie. No! So I, this is like the spiritual successor to Saving Private Ryan. Really? Yes. And that is... Saving Private Ryan was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a video of it on this channel. Check it out if you want. Yes, we do. Um, and it was also really intense. It made me upset. Yeah. And uh, it was great, though. You know, if they, if they nail this, that's quite a feat. And judging by what I've heard about this, they did yeah so. the key difference i think is that saving private ryan is a fictional story set in this setting and band of brothers my understanding so I, I don't mean to interrupt myself but i saw this show a very long time ago in high school and i don't remember it at all okay but what i do remember about the premise from that is that this is a true story these are depictions of real soldiers and real things that happened to them okay and there are interviews with the old men who are the men in the story, but it like doesn't tell you with little like captions or anything who you're seeing talk. Right, so you don't okay. know who gets through the story. You just don't know some of them are telling you about what was going on. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how they like weave that into this without like ruining the pacing or the flow of it, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't really remember. Again, I, yeah. My high my high school U.S. history teacher showed us this show at the end of the year, but I was not paying attention and being a foolish high school kid. Yes, and yes, yes. As, so, as we all yeah, were, I think. I didn't watch it when it was being shown to us. But, uh, yeah, I think we should just check it out. You want to dive in? Okay. All right, we're going to watch Band of Brothers. We've got a Patreon link down there. You can check that out to help support the channel if you like, and there's cool stuff over there. Uh Check that out if you want to, but yeah, Band of Brothers, Kurahi. Our country was attacked. It's a different. It wasn't like Korea or Vietnam. We was attacked. Yep. Uh, we, a lot of us volunteered. Who would like to volunteer for the tank corps? Who would like to volunteer for the Air Force? Who would like to volunteer <sighs> for the Navy I or just, whatever? I and then uh, just the, saying like I would yeah it's so scary <laughs> like really real yeah. you know yeah. the guy said well you jump out of airplanes you know you got all your army equipment and you jump out of airplanes uh, to fight the enemy they said go to hell nobody put up their hand yeah right <laughs> yeah. but you get paid fifty dollars a month more <gasps> so that made it you don't bucks. say fifty dollars a month sign me up to jump out of airplanes with oh, army gear God. <laughs> A pottery. Jeez. I saw that actor who is Tommy in Snatch and Al Capone on Boardwalk Empire. I don't know his name, but... Oh, yeah. No jump tonight! The evasion has been postponed. We're on a 24-hour stand -down. Oh man, we don't get to go jump out of a plane with all of our army gear today. Shucks. They've been training for so long to think that it's something to look forward to. Right, know? yeah, They've been that's being true. conditioned to look forward to it. If you're so interested in serving a cause, why don't you join the army? Michael Fassbender, he's so young. Yeah. I've never seen him in anything earlier than 300. Yeah. 
And Damien Lewis. Did you watch Homeland? No. Lots of people on this show. Yeah, dude. They'll be fine. Ensemble cast. What's that guy's name? Ron Livingston. Yeah, there we go. Should have been born earlier, Nix. What, and give up all this? <laughs> I bet it really felt like it was the end of the world when you were taking part in World War II. Oh, sure, yeah. There's not, there's no coming back from this. Mm hmm It's quite a time jump. Everything's much brighter. Mm hmm you people are at the position oh my God. of attention! Organize him too, what's who- what That's David this? Schwimmer. That's Ross from Friends. That's it, it's Ross from Friends. Wow. There's Michael Cudlitz mm -hmm. from The Walking Dead. Oh my God. <laughs> when did you sew on these chevrons, Sergeant Lipton? Yesterday, sir. Long enough to notice this. Revoked. <laughs> sir. That's Donnie Wahlberg. Name. Oh my god. Marky, Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be able to keep up with this dude. <laughs> Rust on the butt plate hinge spring private bullshit revoked. These inspections are like just... You, yeah. You, they fail you any way they can. Any bullshit yeah. they can fail you for. You want to kill Germans? Yes, sir. Not with this. It seems like that would be effective still, right? Well, you need the mindset of doing everything exactly right every time. Yep. Because everyone else's yeah. lives depend on you doing it right, you know? It's a psychological exercise, for sure. Change into your PT gear. We're running Kurahi. Kurahi, okay. It's so hard for me to see him in this context. It's like a, he's like a, you know, sitcom comedy actor mm -hmm. in my head. Yeah. Now what company is this? Easy company! Now what do we do? Kill Do not help oh, that shit. man! Do not help that man! Do not stop! Oh, man, to get injured in, like, basic training? Just yeah. Be lame. I did already see Kirk Acevedo, too, who's from Oz and The Walking Dead and a lot oh, okay. of stuff, but... On my command, they will pour the contents onto the ground. On the CO's order, you will upend your canteen. Now, Lieutenant. Pour them. Damn. They weren't supposed to drink their water on the walk? Oh. Private Christensen, you have disobeyed a direct order. You will fill your canteen and repeat all 12 miles of the march immediately. Yes, sir. Damn. Yeah, that's the kind of punishment. Yeah. You didn't do it right, you're going to do it right. I want the names of six men. Their infractions and your disciplinary recommendations on my desk by 0130. Is that clear? Oh, Damn. wow. Got some pads of glory going on. Infractions, sir. Yeah, yeah, for real. Stand in the door. Go! You just broke both your legs, Private Gordon. Gotta rehearse. Yep. Ah! Just get in such good shape, but then the food's no good, so like, I feel like. I don't know how these guys actually ended up, like, gaining it all. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, there's enough food. You know, I think yeah. it's about. The, it's not as though the bad food is some psychological part of it, it's just about the scale of food you need for so many people. You know? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. gross! Yeah. Animal think, guts, like, yeah, probably. Big entrails and stuff, yeah. <laughs> You gotta not stop when something grosses you out, mm -hmm. right? Yep. What is this? Anybody. See, you're gonna be a dick just to be a dick? A peaches, sir. Yeah. Lieutenant Nixon. I guess. Thinks this is a can of peaches. That is incorrect, Lieutenant. Your weekend pass is canceled. This. He's Simon Pegg. Taken without authorization from my mess facility. And I will not tolerate thievery in my. Oh my god. <laughs> All weekend passes are canceled, officers included. Oh. Carry on. Yeah, you're a real nice guy. Colonel Singh has seen fit to promote you. As first lieutenant, he'll serve as my executive officer. Congratulations. I am designating you mess officer for 14 days. Company breakfast to be served at 0600. 
Yes, sir. Thanks. So, yeah, why is he, like, There's is he threatened by him, and that's tomorrow. why he knows he's a, mm. a better so man? We'll have a light afternoon. I think it's, uh, it's tough love or something like that. It's, mm, okay. You know. A special meal before their afternoon off would be a welcome change of pace. Would you agree? Yes, sir. I like spaghetti. Hey, more slop. That looks all right. Yeah, you're right. It's got some color to it. It's their special meal, at least. What has changed? Get up! Elections are canceled! Easy Company is running up curry! Move! Move! Damn it. Let's go! Let's go! Mm. Okay, so we gave him a special meal just to take it away and make no, him, to make him throw sick, up spaghetti. Yeah. All you have to do is remember what you were taught, and I guarantee you gravity will take care of the rest. Yeah. Woo! Any refusals in the aircraft or at the door, and I guarantee you, you will be out of the airborne. Yeah. Yep. If you don't jump, you're not doing this. Well, at ease, paratroopers. The big wig. Now, parachute infantry is a brand new concept in American military history. Hmm. I got the 506. I want you to know that I'm damn proud of each and every one of you. So I want you to have fun and remember our motto. Karahe! Okay, it's their motto and it's the hill they run up and down. Okay. So they're still in the USA, so they're still training. Mm -hmm. So, they're wearing war the, games. Yeah, yeah, they're wearing the red armbands. They're simulating. They're right out there somewhere. Let's just get them. Sir, we have perfect cover here. So can I deploy your troops? Oh, come on, dude. Sick them, too. Move out. What? Tactical call. Haven't you ever played Call of Duty? The moment you leave your cover, you're dead. There's a lot of guys that'll be heard traipsing through the forest. Right, exactly. Yeah. You lose. Leave three wounded men on the ground and report back to the assembly area. You gotta leave wounded men on the ground. What do they get to do? Yeah, right. Take a nap. He's got no chance. Either the crowd still get him, or one of us. <laughs> oh. Jeez. Well, you know, I'm always fumbling with grenades. It'd be easy if one went off by accident, you know? Well, <laughs> that's. Yeah, like one maneuver is. Everybody's dead. Yeah, that's all it takes. No! You want to kill him? Harry right! Harry left! Front! Ah! Oh, bayonets. This is just... Yeah. Yesterday we talked <laughs> bad news. Magnetic declination. If you find yourself using that, you're in a bad situation. Yeah. Our second platoon in this particular case moves over here. He's then going to close with and kill or capture that German. Crazy. It's cool to see the progression of their training and yeah. the, uh, different things they're learning to do at different times. I feel like the color palette is slowly getting more like what the beginning of was like than mm -hmm. the flashback scenes as we close in on the actual time that they're, you know, that they showed us in the very beginning. Why is there a fence here? There should be no fence here. Tipper! Yes, sir. Give me the map. Oh, dude, keep your cool, man. Pecani Luz, get the men. Get them. Take cover behind those trees. He's vexed by a fence. Yeah. Where the goddamn. Where the goddamn hell are <laughs> Oh, man. No Google Maps either. No, you're just <laughs> lost. Oh, yeah. Yes. You got it. Come on. Alright, just, just watch that. What is he gonna do? Three. Isn't that the intersection? No, sir, it's here. You're full grid off. God damn it. Oh. How much is a grid? Who said that? Who broke silence? I think it's Major Horton, sir. Major Horton? What, what is he? Did he join us? Pretending to be the major? <laughs> hey, are you got that fence to get this goddamn platoon on the move! Yes, sir! Oh, God. 
Oh, this poor guy. I mean, he should not be here. In case if we were wondering if the fence is necessary, the cows are right there on the other side. Right. Major Horton. Yes, sir. Major Horton told you to do that. Yes, sir. Major Horton ordered you to cut the fence. Yes. Oh, my God. Major Horton is on leave in London. Oh. So now he just looks like a liar and an idiot. Yeah. For Captain Sobel's compliments, sir. What is it? Not for crying out loud. They spelled court martial. <laughs> court martialed? What? Why? I think he was court martialed. No, sir, I do not understand. Not... Oh, me. no way. No one told me, sir. I telephoned. I'm courted with a family that has no telephone. And sent a runner. No runner found me, Captain. Irregardless. When given a time. Irregardless. Yeah. Officer, you should have. Or to let such a failure of duty by my own XO go unpunished, what kind of message is that to the men? <sighs> I performed my duty as I was ordered, sir. And I disagree. So... Oh, man. Oh, man. Punishment for your offenses will be denial of a 48-hour pass for 60 days. Stand before me at attention, or you may initiate a letter of appeal and request a trial by court-martial. Do it. Yep. You spend your weekends on the base anyway, Dick. Be a man. Take the punishment. Jesus. Oh, ho, ho! He took the pen right out of his hand. My endorsement, sir. I request trial by court martial. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yep. man. You gonna uh, face me in court? Explain this crap right. to our superiors, please. You gotta do something. It's a mutiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not literally. Well, no. But we'd all better be clear of the consequences. I don't care about the consequences. None. The consequences are we die under that guy's up command. Wall and shot. I'm ready to face that. There, they'll be. One of us had better be too. They're planning to do something they could be executed for. Let's do it. But they're all writing letters. Yeah. No longer wish to serve as a non-commissioned officer in easy company. Oh, they're all going to resign at once. You are hereby transferred out of my regiment. Sir. Get out. Sir Granny. Okay. Sir. All of you NCOs have disgraced the 101st Airborne. You can consider yourself lucky that we are on the eve of the largest action in the history of warfare. <laughs> yeah, they knew he can't afford to just... no choice but to spare your lives. Now get out of my office and get out of my sight. Get. I mean, yeah, there has to be the threat of... Right. ...executing you for refusing, because you're going into life-or-death battle. You right, know, if yeah, the, yeah, yeah. If the, uh, the consequence was anything less than death, you'd just take it. Like, oh, I don't think they said anything about him, though. They just said nope, that they, they were didn't. resigning, right? Mm -hmm. And these few sergeants convinced all of the other NCOs in your company to turn in their stripes. As staff sergeants, they have a great amount of influence, sir. But as I say, the rest are good men. I know them. I, I can work with them. Coward. You have to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. Your command of Easy Company has been exemplary. Thank you, Thank you sir. Is that so? Division has established a parachute training school at Chilton Foley. The idea is for non-infantry types who were vital to the coming invasion, such as doctors and chaplains, to take jump training. Frankly, I can't think of anyone more qualified to command such a school than you are. Oh, okay. Pulling them out. You're being you go ahead and sir? promoted Teach out. Teach the doctors and everyone else to jump out of planes. Yep. I'm losing easy company? But it's or a disgrace. You elsewhere. At least they're trying to do it in a way that saves face for him. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Good luck at Chilton Foley at Herbert. Don't let us down now. <sighs> He's so offended, but it's like, dude, you didn't deserve this position in the first. This is the nicest possible way that this could go down. Definitely. 
Yeah. You could see from the very beginning that he was wrong for the position yeah. he was in. Not even being demoted. It's like a, a, a lateral move, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Like, you get to save face with anyone in your life and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, this is a few days before D-Day, right? Yeah. I want the first one, A-side tents, right up there! No, wait. The first one, second well, yeah, D-Day's like June 6, 1944 or something, or I can't remember. Green light, right over Ramsbury. Ramsbury, every single time. Linear distance on the grid of about... Yeah, how much planning and practicing do you do for something like this? Yeah. Ramsbury. We're gonna jump out of airplanes into a war. We better yeah. get it right. <laughs> Gotta be the right spot. It's Normandy. Saint Marie mm -hmm. du Mont, causeway number. One. Sure is. The estuary of the Douve River divides two beachheads, codenamed Utah here and Omaha here. Okay, mm -hmm. I recognize these terms. Yep. We are talking about D-Day. Right here in this area, Saint Marie du Mont. Easy Company will destroy Ooh. that garrison. Oh boy. Yeah. You did not sign your GI life insurance policy. You go on over and see Sergeant Evans at the headquarters company tent. The boys don't let your families miss out on $10,000. <laughs> go sign the, Jesus. the yeah. you might die paper. Yeah. Garnier's brother in Italy, Henry, killed in Monte Casino. Well, I'm sure he doesn't know. Damn. What do you think I should do? Hmm, probably don't tell him. For me, I tell him. Oh? A couple hours before we jump? Yeah, dude. That's, that's rough. I don't know. I don't know. It's a hard a decision. He's got a right to know. Man. Yeah. It's a hard choice. Soldiers of the regiment. Tonight is the night of night. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, he stops joking around right away when he realizes. In route to the great adventure. Here it goes. Yep. I mean, no jump tonight. The invasion has been postponed. We're on a 24 hour stand down. Hmm. Yeah, what's the stress of that like? Jeez. Should you be giving blood? I woke up. Something happened to me. Got the wrong goddamn jacket. How did that happen? Yeah. You read somebody else's letter? Uh, Bill Garnier's brother. Remember this. Oh. Oh, now somebody else can tell him. That was is. Is that, that it must be yeah, his brother? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, this feels like it's go time. Still one day before drop, I think, or maybe maybe it's the like, airborne hit before the beach. I think they yeah, they go tonight and they drop in the dark yeah, and they, then yep. it's sun up. The boats hit. Sorry about your brother, Bill. Sorry for my mom. He was uh. Let's get this over with. No, oh, God. Gentlemen, Doc Rowe is handing these out for air sickness. Orders are every man takes one now, another 30 minutes in the air. I think I'd be throwing up for other reasons than just air sickness. Yeah. Abject fear. Yeah. So in the comments, help me out. What's with the, the nets on the helmet? So they just... It's there to... So you can stick crap in there and make yourself... Like more camouflage? Yeah, I don't like, know. You know. See, they all have nets on their helmets and they all have stuff in there. I understand the stuff will help them maybe be less easy to see if they're prone, you know, like on the ground and stuff, but. Is there a reason for why they're like that? Yeah, that's a good question. You think the army doesn't like to waste their money on unnecessary. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it serves stuff. a purpose. Yeah. I changed my mind, I don't want to go. <laughs> Is there gonna be anybody doing that? You can't at this point. No. You're not gonna be the one guy. You know, after all this, this is what they've been waiting for, really. Yeah. Jesus. 
it would be very hard not to be afraid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I imagine they are afraid, but it would be mm -hmm. very hard not to show fear for me. Oh, yeah. There's something about just the deafening silence that I think is the show of fear. Like, mm -hmm. What are you going to do, cry? I feel like yeah. the adrenaline's just going, you know? And then they got a long trip before exactly. they actually arrive. And they are officially airborne. The airborne is airborne. Look at how many of them. Yeah. Full-scale war is wild. It's also something that I don't really think of. You know, when I'm thinking of, like, airborne divisions, like, dropping in, I think of, like, two planes full of, you know, Yeah. Ten guys each. You know, this 20 was, dudes. This was a lot of guys. So, yeah. Not, like, you know, probably hundreds falling from the sky, you know. And in this case, when they, like, they've jumped out of a plane before, that's not so bad probably at this mm -hmm. point, but now they got people on the ground who are trying to kill them from the moment they leave the plane until Ex the moment they hit the ground, and then exactly. every single second after that. And then just from the German side seeing this come at you. Gotta be kind of scary too. That's why they're dug in with those bunkers and those machine guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The planes and the boats are going in. General Eisenhower, mm -hmm. before he was the president. There we go. Wow. Kurahi. Band of Brothers. That was just the the build up. Yeah, and, there was and, 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 a lot of majesty to it. You yeah, know? presented in a very majestic way, I think. Well, you know, if this is done right, I think that well, now I shouldn't necessarily judge it that way. The way I would like to see this play out is that we were presented with it with this sort of majesty, with and that's like how the characters are perceiving it. Mm -hmm. And I want to then see like the true horrible reality, like, when they hit the ground of what this situation actually looks like, you know? Like, yeah. there were so many gung-ho, yeah, and they, they they were saying that most of these guys were volunteers, Yeah, right? So they, they were like, let's go eagerly. kill some Nazis, yeah. you know? And it's like, all right, man. They're kids, too. Yeah. They're very young mm -hmm. men, you know? It's, it's easy to forget that, because I see these characters as people who have, like, more life experience than me, yeah. even though I'm, you know, close to twice the age of some of these characters, probably, but it's like just what they're dealing with and facing seems to be on such a different level from anything I've ever yeah, dealt with in my life. The so. kind of thing that, like, full adults should exactly. be able to volunteer to do, yeah. but not like if you're too young to have graduated college, yeah. you know? It seems it's a hard, that's. That's a crazy thing about a lot of these old wars. It's just like most of them were fought by what we would consider children. Yeah, just ver Straight very, up. very young men, you know, teenagers yeah. and stuff. But it's sort of that's the demographic of person that is most willing to go into these situations yeah. where your whole life is on the line because they, there's a mindset that you kind of carry around when you're that young of like, oh, I won't die. Death happens right. to yeah, other yeah, people, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's a other people in the situation I'm in, I might witness terrible things, but I will come out the other side. Because... The true reality of my mortality has has set in slowly but surely as I've, you know, yeah. come of age and realized that, like, oh, yeah, and you know what? You can die. <laughs> I can die. <laughs> exactly. It's in the last uh, in the last few years, since definitely since crossing into my 30s, it's become a lot more, I've realized, like, oh, my body is going to just keep, get, I'm going to be wake up older than I was the day before, mm -hmm. every day. And it's never gonna go back the other way to being younger again, and stuff is gonna break down completely eventually, yeah, so yep. yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, and a situation like this just, uh, I guess is a stark contrast to that, of like yeah. everything could just be snuffed out in an instant. Mm -hmm. in battle, so. And it, I mean, so something that I thought was interesting, I did not expect this much, like, lead up. Mm -hmm. I expected, you know, to be introduced to some characters and then just kind of be jumping in, you know, this, what was this, like an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. I expected yeah. by like the 45 minute mark to be like landing, you know, on the ground. 
on location. Right. You know what I mean? You thought we'd get more actual war and less training? Yeah, but, well, but what I thought was interesting that I actually kind of liked is that it showed us a very real of, like, or, like, how actually disorganized and sort of precarious the whole situation is, you know? Like, yeah. They've had a complete shift around of command. They obviously had a, a commanding officer who was not a good fit you know it's like yeah it's not, not a good fit for the role he was in yeah the stakes of the situation he, they were entering yeah and as the authority he got just moved out of that place of authority like at kind of the last minute his, before... his subordinates got the best of him really you know right. like they tricked him and made him look like a fool and then they staged a quasi mutiny to be mm -hmm. like you got a big trouble on your hands if you don't get rid of this guy you know right and yeah i just i guess i don't really think like most most military stories that are presented in the like Hollywood fashion are just like we've been training this elite like force of soldiers and mm -hmm. the guy on the top is like he's a hard ass but he's the one in charge and at the end of the day he will rally the troops and like make sure that that everyone he'll get them all through yeah that, through hell together kind of thing but it's like <laughs> seems to me like it's you know it's it's this the it's the upper management issue right of the like messiness the, of it what yeah. they call it the peter principle right people get promoted to one level above where they're effective right because yeah. you, get, you go to your effective level and then they're like this guy's really good and they promote you again and now you're at one level above what yeah. you're actually good at and so that's tends just how organizations get to over time right i mean i'm kind of wondering how that guy even got well into he that was position. probably good at the level below where he was sure. and so he did that well so they promoted him but yeah, and we didn't see very much of Neil McDonough's character, who I think came in to replace him, but already I was getting the impression from him of like, oh, this is the guy you want to be following. You right, know? Like yeah. He immediately had more of a commanding presence to him, just mm -hmm. in the one little conversation we saw him have. So yeah. yeah, that was... And I think, you know, it's interesting, You, because I, I agree with you about that, like, there was sort of all build-up, all training this episode, mm -hmm. and we didn't really get into a landing in the action part. But I think that maybe this is just, keep in mind, this is the real story of Easy Company. Mm -hmm. So maybe they gathered the tales from these men, and then they kind of just put them in chronological order, and they broke them up into right. episodes. So, like, they're just telling us all this training because this is what comes first in these stories, you know? So it's less about the Hollywood structure and more about just passing along these real men's lives. Right. And I, I would think, like, in a, in maybe, like, a, again, like kind of a more curated story about this time period that's maybe not as based in real people's experience, they would probably do all of this stuff in like flashbacks, yeah. you know? But it's like, it's already gonna be a little bit chopped up by us having the interviews with the real guys, which I think is super cool too. Like, yeah, and that was just very, at the very beginning, I wonder mm -hmm. if we'll only be at the top of each episode or if they'll intersperse Right, them. yeah. Because they faded to black so many times, there were easily places you could have put more of those in mm -hmm. and it would have fit just fine. But I would kind of rather get all that context out of the way. Mm -hmm. I feel like I understand these characters and their motivations, these pe real people and their real life motivations exactly. so much better now. Yeah. And like, now let's see what the the shit that they end up in. Yeah, we're I seeing it from like. the perspective they see it from, when mm -hmm. they already know what happened at training and their relationships to each other and stuff. So yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. It was cool. I'm uh, I'm definitely excited to see where it goes and see that, you know, I know this show's got a very, very strong reputation. Mm -hmm. And I think on lists of best TV shows ever, this is always at or near the top. So yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see what that's all about. But uh, me too. That do it for this one. I think so. All right. Thanks for joining us to watch Band of Brothers, everybody. Check out our other videos and uh, stick around with us for more episodes coming later. Until next time, I'm Sean. I'm Nate. This is Ketchup Packets. Goodbye.